Welcome back to Jay Smokehouse and the History of Cannabis series, Episode 9, Cannabis in the Colonial Period. This is one of my favorite episodes, or at least one of my favorites to have researched. And two main reasons are Shakespeare and George Washington. However, we'll have to get to those later in the episode. Let's go ahead and start around actually 1545. And this would be probably one of the first times that cannabis makes it to the Americas, specifically South America, by the Spanish. Now, the Spanish did try to grow cannabis in several locations, and those would be in modern day Mexico, Peru, Colombia, and Chile. However, it seems that Chile was the only place that it actually flourished, and specifically the Quillota Valley in Chile. Now, before we go any further, I will apologize really quickly for my voice. I am still recovering from a very bad sore throat. However, it's been quite a while since I got a video out, so I wanted to go ahead and record episode 9. And so the Spanish bringing cannabis to South America around 1545 would be the first time that cannabis made it to South America, and some believe the Americas as a whole. However, there's something that I read about in my research recently that I didn't really think about from my previous episodes, and that is the Vikings. If Leif Erikson did make it to Newfoundland, they were using hemp rope already in hemp sales. So it is possible that they introduced cannabis in some way to North America. However, the accepted first introduction of cannabis to North America is a little bit later, and I'll get into that in just a little bit. But before that, let's go ahead and head back to Great Britain for just a little bit. And now in Great Britain, we have William Shakespeare. Now, in William Shakespeare's actual garden, and there's several locations that they have fragments of clay pipes, but this is in the actual garden that they believe was William Shakespeare's. So just keep that in mind. Now, in all these locations, they found 24 fragments of clay pipes by William Shakespeare dating to around 1600 AD. Now, the study is reported in the South African Journal of Science in July of 2015. Now, on eight of these 24 fragments, they found traces of cannabis, and this was in his actual garden. They did find two fragments with traces of cocaine. However, that was not in his actual garden, so that is why I'm not going to really mention that in this episode as there is a little contention if it was actually his or not. But in this location, in this garden, this was supposed to be William Shakespeare's personal garden. Now, I don't see any mention of whether it had high traces of THC. It is possible if he had it imported, but you wouldn't be able to grow very high traces of THC in Great Britain. So whether or not he was using it medicinally or recreationally, I'm not quite sure. Just, I find it so fascinating that William Shakespeare might have used cannabis. That is really, really cool. And I even remember a lot of people saying that there's references of cannabis or drugs in Shakespeare's writings. I'm really eager to actually reread a lot of his writings to see if I can see these subtleties. Then we move to the Jamestown Settlers, which started around 1611. Now, the Jamestown Settlers are believed to be the first to bring cannabis seeds to North America. Now, I do believe it is possible, I'm not sure how likely, but it is possible that cannabis could have made it up north into North America from Chile by this time. However, there is no mention of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with the historical reference of the Jamestown settlers in 1611, which would be, if not for the Vikings, the first time that cannabis would be introduced to North America. And then staying in Great Britain, let's move to a famous Oxford scholar and English clergyman, and that would be Robert Burton. In 1621, he published the book titled the Anatomy of Melancholy, and in this book, he suggests that cannabis is a great treatment for depression. 
Now again, staying in Great Britain, which it seems that they had quite a few great minds who were very supportive of cannabis. Now this would be the great herbalist, Nicholas Culpepper. Now in this book, he writes about cannabis extract as thus. Hemp extract allayeth inflammations in the head, eases the pains of the gout, knots in the joints, and the pains of the sinews and hips. Now that's all really cool, especially at what time it was. And this will be covered in a later episode, but later on we'll find out that even in America in the pharmacopoeia, cannabis makes it there for so many ailments. It's so amazing how quickly everything reverts back with the very, very abrupt war on cannabis. Now, it is possible that Nicholas Culpepper did get his cannabis actually imported somewhere else, so it actually had high traces of THC. However, if he was using his own homegrown or homegrown from someone else in Great Britain, most likely it did not have high traces of THC, which we've already discussed in this episode. And now finally, we're getting to George Washington. Now, most people do know that George Washington grew hemp at Mount Vernon. I mean, it's very widely accepted and even at Mount Vernon, they talk about how he grew it. However, on all the government sites and very many, many historians will be very adamant to tell you that it was under 0.3% of THC. Now, to be honest with you, I have no idea what they're basing this on, except that in in the government right now, they say you can't grow hemp with more than 0.3% of THC. However, I've seen hemp grown with much higher traces of THC. It is possible. So I don't know where they're actually getting this idea. I think it's probably because they think it was most likely European hemp. And it's very true. He did use here European seed to grow. However, we do have evidence in his journals and diaries, especially with correspondence with his gardener, that he wasn't just growing European seed of hemp. He specifically talks about growing Indian hemp seed. Now, why is it why is it important that he talks about Indian hemp seed? And that that is because Indian hemp was associated with what we know as marijuana, high THC. That Indian hemp seed was associated with high THC cannabis. So he wouldn't be talking about European seed and Indian seed and be talking about the exact same plant. So he obviously was growing something that was different from hemp. And I truly believe uh, with many others that he was growing high THC cannabis along with industrial hemp or low THC cannabis. Now here is a quote from the book, Hemp American History Revisited, The Plant with a Divided History, 2003. George Washington's diary entries indicate that he grew hemp at Mount Vernon, his plantation for about 30 years, approximately 1745 to 1775. According to his agricultural ledgers, he had a particular interest in the medicinal use of cannabis, and several of his diary entries indicate that he indeed was growing cannabis with a high tetrahydrocannabinol THC content, or marijuana. Now here's some quotes from some correspondence between George Washington and William Pierce, his gardener, in 1794 while he was president of the United States. And I'm just going to go ahead and give you the dates of each entry. January 6, 1794. I also gave the gardener a few seed of East India hemp to raise from. Inquire for the seed which has been saved and make the most of it at the proper season for sowing. February 24th. I am very glad to hear that the gardener has saved so much of the St. Foyne seed and that of the India hemp. Make the most you can of both by sowing them again in drills. August 17th. I cannot with certainty recollect whether I saw the India hemp growing when I was last at Mount Vernon. But think it was in the vineyard, somewhere I hope it was sown, and therefore desire that the seed may be saved in due season and with as little loss as possible, that 
if it may be valuable, I may make the most of it. March 15th, 1795. Presuming you saved all the seed you could from the India hemp, let it be carefully sown again for the purpose of getting into a full stock of seed. May 29th, 1796. What was done with the seed saved from the India hemp last summer? It ought, all of it, to have been sown again, that not only a stock of seed sufficient for my own purposes might have been raised, but to have disseminated the seed to others, as it is more valuable than the common hemp. Now that last entry, that's what really caught my attention. It says it's more valuable than the common hemp. So to me, at least, it's obvious to me that he is not just using industrial hemp or common hemp. And so that is so big. That's why I believe that George Washington actually grew high THC or marijuana at Mount Vernon. It wasn't just this industrial hemp that just magically cannot reach anything over 0.3% of THC. Now let's go ahead and move to a botanist in Sweden. His name is Carl von Linnaeus, and he is considered the father of Swedish botany. And he is the one who coins the term cannabis sativa. But before we talk about how indica got its name, let's go ahead and talk about Thomas Jefferson, another founding father of America. Now, there doesn't seem to be as extensive of evidence from Thomas Jefferson. However, there are journal entries suggesting that he is separating male and female cannabis plants at Monticello. Now, these journal entries do span between about 1774 and 1824, and they do mention that he is separating male and female plants. However, there's not a whole lot more about what he was using it for, if he ever smoked it, if he ever used it. However, apparently there is a mention in one of George Washington's diaries that mentions that Thomas Jefferson was quite the smoker. But I will take it as the gossip that it is. We don't really have any evidence on whether or not he used it. I just know that he did grow it and it seems that he was separating male and female plants, which, which suggests to me that most likely he was doing that to grow high THC or to attempt to grow high THC cannabis. Now, it seems that the current definition for cannabis sativa or just sativa is a rather long stem and then short leaves. And so that is indicating the actual hemp plant aside from the indica or high THC cannabis plants. They seem to be more bushy and more stunted. So then we come to a French naturalist. Jean-Baptiste Lamarck in 1783, he is the one who coined indica, and it is because he believed he found a new species of cannabis. So he felt that he needed to distinguish between what is known as cannabis sativa and the new cannabis indica. And one very small reason that he actually named it indica is for its region in India. Another reason that I believe that he did it is it's because the Indus Valley that is associated with. And so Indica because of the Indus Valley, because of India, very many reasons to call it Indica. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop off here. And it's actually very difficult for me to do so because what we're going to talk about next is so big and interesting. But this is one interesting story and it revolves around a very interesting historical figure Napoleon. And it talks about how cannabis or specifically marijuana use really spread around Europe. However, let's go ahead and get into this next episode. Now, if you enjoyed this video or you learned anything, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know what you think. And also don't forget to subscribe and possibly share this video to those who might enjoy it or those you want to educate on cannabis. And now, as always, Jay is going to go smoke a Jay.